You know, one of the challenges I've had as a guy who does web development tutorials is whenever I'm demonstrating stuff, it's difficult to get it to look nice. Let me give you an example. So here's a basic Trongate installation, right? It's the welcome page. Now I'm going to clear the decks here. So over on the right, it's going to be an empty page, right? And what I'd like you to do, if you can, is join in with me here, right? We're going to build a basic page together. Maybe give it a little headline. In fact, actually, let's have a div with an ID of container. Probably not a bad idea, right? Now, I'm going to style this container here. I'm going to say that if we have an ID of container, how about if we say width is 90% perhaps? And also, we can say max width is perhaps something like, let's just say 700 pixels. And finally, I'm going to say margin zero auto. Now, all that's going to do is move everything to the center. I'll do a little H1. I'm going to say headline. And just so you can see what's happening, if I say background color green, we're going to save and refresh. Well, there you can see what's happened. It's just moved it to the center, right? That's the container, okay? Now, we'll take this green out. And please do follow along because there's something that I would like to show you here. You see, if we're building a site, let's say it's a site with a form, okay? So we'll say something like, please fill out the form below and then hit submit, okay? We've all built pages like this before. Let's add in some form tags. Now, I don't really care about the action and whatnot. But maybe we could have a little label here. We could say something like your name. Maybe we could have some sort of text input here. Maybe something like that. Maybe you'll have a label here. Maybe one that says email address. And again, we could have a little form input here. No big deal. Maybe we'll do one more. Maybe there's a label here that says description. Who knows? Maybe there's a text area here. All right, now that's a very simple form. Let's not even worry about things like ID, okay? It's just a very, very simple form. And maybe we would like to have a button here that says submit, okay? Now, we've all built pages like this in the past. And of course, the big problem is that if we refresh on the right hand side, it is a catastrophe. Have a look at it. I mean, if I zoom you in, it's just all over the place, you know? Now, it is true that we have a whole variety of CSS frameworks or front-end frameworks that can solve this. Frameworks like Bootstrap, Materialize, Defiant, um, Spectre, Milligram, Skeleton. Folks, I love them all. They're all fantastic. The challenge is that none of them solve this problem in a way that is satisfactory. And let me show you what I mean, right? If you take, for example, just one part of this page, think about the button, for example, right? Now, our button looks hideous. The question is, how do all of those other frameworks make the buttons look nice? What you will find, I think, is that they do something like this. They'll say class is BTN, BTN primary. They might say something like BTN large. Uh, if you've got a submit button or a cancel button rather, you might have something like class is BTN and then BTN outline. And um, to make matters more complicated, some of them don't say BTN, some of them say button. Uh, some of them might not say large, they might say LG. And if that's not confusing enough, often you have to say on your form, classes form horizontal or something like that. What does that even mean? And then to do the buttons, you have to typically do things like div with form group and stuff like that. We've all seen that. And to me, this is confusing and it's something of an irritation. Now, what if we could somehow have a really, really nice looking page without any of that stuff. 
So if you take this page here, the word class does not appear anywhere on this page. Now, of course, on the right hand side it looks horrible, but check this out. I'm going to add just one line of code here. Font's a bit small, so I'm going to say, here we go, I'm going to say link, and I'm going to link to CSS, because it's in the CSS folder, and it's called trongate.css, and I'm going to save it. Over on the right hand side, I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, it's absolutely fantastic. Perhaps for the first time, we no longer have to worry about classes. And do you know there's even buttons that break when you add different button types? Like it'll behave different if it's submit or type equals button. We no longer have to worry about that. Oh, hallelujah. Now, let me show you a few more features and I do hope that you enjoy this. So, I suppose one of the main benefits as a Trongate developer is that if I'm doing a tutorial or something like that, let's suppose that I'm doing something like this, right? And maybe I'm going to say something like city, okay? Now, in the past, you would have to typically do something like um, maybe well, let's say, just say even for a submit button, you might do something like that. And then what? Well, you'd normally have to say attributes, class, equals, and then you add in all of this confusing nightmare stuff and you join it on, okay? Now, look at it. I haven't even got room on the page. This, ladies and gentlemen, is... A major, major irritation. I don't want to have to add attributes and classes. I just want it to look nice. So what this does is it allows you to just do things like this. Form, submit, name of submit, value of submit, close it, refresh, and it's perfect. Suppose you want a drop down. Let's do that, right? So typically, now this is not entirely proper because typically you would pass this in from the controller file, but we'll just cheat today, right? So I'm going to say options. We might have an option here that says something like select city. We might have another option here, perhaps with a value of one, let's say. And maybe that's going to say something like this. Maybe we'll have another with a value of two. Maybe that's going to say London, right? Then we could say something like selected. Perhaps our selected option is empty. Now again, all of this should be passed in from the controller file. So I'm kind of cheating here. But in any event, let's imagine we just say echo form drop down. I'll give it a name of city. I'm going to pass in the options. And I'm going to pass in the selected value. Like that, okay? Now if I just save it and refresh, look at that, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, some of you folks are thinking, well, this is nice, but how do we do big buttons? And I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So let's imagine, first of all, maybe we've got a submit button and a cancel button, right? It's very normal, okay? And maybe you want to make bigger buttons. So what I'll do, just for clarity, I'll have a div. I don't need to have a div, but I'm going to have one. And I'll chuck these two inside the div, okay? And I'm going to tab in. Now, by the way, this framework does not care if it's type or button, type of submit. None of that matters, okay? Let's just keep it really, really simple. And the question is, how do we make this large? Okay? And... Uh, if we take a look at the, let's do another one actually. How would we make this small? Well, if I refresh, there's not too much happening. They're all the same size. Now, would you allow me to quickly add in a paragraph here? It's just so that I'm not uh, looking down all the time, you know. I'm just going to add in a little bit of height here. Okay. So, that was just so that I can scroll here. Now the question is, how do you make these buttons different sizes? 
everybody is watching this tutorial and you are expecting me to do something like this. Class equals perhaps something like that. That's what everybody's expecting. But no. Instead, I'm going to keep the button like that. Pure, simple, easy to understand. And I'm just going to go into the container itself and say something like font size 22 pixels. Save, refresh, and look at that. The padding, the margin, everything's beautiful. A fantastic button. Suppose we're going to do the same with the small buttons here. Okay, so I'll do the same again. Style equals. Now, again, I'll say font size. You don't need to say pixels. We can say M's, perhaps 0.8M. Save, refresh, and look at that. Really, really simple. And folks, the word class does not even appear on this page. Now, some of you are thinking, well, hang on, you don't want all of the buttons to look the same, and I agree. So perhaps for the first time, maybe we are going to use the word class here. For each of those cancel buttons, I'm just going to say class equals. Now, it's an alternative button. I'm just going to say alt. And as we refresh, perfect. By the way, if I check this on a mobile device, I'm going to right click and inspect. And then click on this little icon here. And just look at how fantastic that is on a mobile device. Everything is just perfect. Okay, so uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that I think you're going to like. I'll just quickly run you through some of it if I can. Um, Obviously, our headlines and all that are just fantastic. So, you know, all of the fonts and everything, uh, the spacing, it's just beautiful, you know. I have uh, lots of elements that have been made to look rather good. So here's uh, some list items, for example. Item 2, and we'll have an item 3. Now, if I save this and refresh, I know that there's nothing. Everybody's like, what's the big deal about that? But folks, look at the nice spacing. Everything is beautiful here. Even things like the HR. You know, I was looking at a framework the other day and it was saying you need to say class as divider and all of that. Well now, even our dividers are beautiful. The spacing is absolutely perfect. And just look at all of the stuff that we did not have to do. Now let me show you a couple of other things and then I'll be done. Um, I'd like to show you the tables because I really, really like the way that tables are handled. So, um, in the past, you've probably seen uh, tables that look something like this. I'll give you a bit of room. So normally, you'll see things like this. Uh, oh gee, there's so much of it. I mean, look at all of that, right? That's what we typically have when we're doing a table. So now we're going to do the unthinkable. Let's just have an ordinary table, perhaps with a table row. And uh, maybe this is going to contain those table headings. We'll have four of them, right? I'm going to say one, two, three, and four. Now, I'll do the same with some ordinary table rows here. So these are going to say TD, right? Here we go, TD. And we'll maybe just paste in a few of these, right? One, two, three, there we go. Now folks, look at all of the stuff I have not done. I have not added in a class. I have not added in table heads. I haven't done any divs. There's no spacing, nothing at all. But I'm just going to save it. And uh, I'll refresh here, and as we have a look at the page, just look at the beautiful table. We even have a nice hover effect going on, and it's fantastic. Again, if I take you to the mobile devices, everything is looking perfect. So, that's what Trongate CSS does. Um, I suppose the last thing I should show you is what about custom buttons. Now, it only really has two buttons, the normal buttons and an alternative button. 
But if you do want another button, it's remarkably easy. Let's say, for example, you decided that you want a delete button, okay? Uh, so I'm going to say button. I'll maybe give it a class of danger. Now, you don't need to call it that. You can call it anything you want. I'm going to say delete, okay? Now, let's head downstairs. And we're going to say that for this danger class, and again, you can call it anything you want. But I'm going to say background colors red, border, one pix red solid. Man, the font color is going to be white. I'm also going to say that for this danger class, whenever we hover, let's make the background color just darken a little bit. So I happen to know that hash 9900000 is going to give us a really deep red. And again, I'll just say border, one pix, bring that in, solid, save it. And if we refresh on the right hand side, Look at the fabulous button, complete with transitions and everything. It's that easy, folks. How easy was that? This uh, is called Trongate CSS. Trongate CSS has no third-party libraries. It uses web-safe fonts. It's a tiny file, and in fact, uh, Jake here just came on, and he has created... Um, some sort of CDN version of it. So you don't even need the Trongate framework. Yeah, you can get it from the web if you want. But in any case, this is going to be included now with all installations of the Trongate framework. You'll find it in the CSS folder. And the whole idea is that for the first time, you can now do beautiful forms without having to worry about all of that CSS stuff. This is not something that I would use in production, at least not at the moment, but I think it's perfect for prototypes and also really good for people who are doing tutorials because you won't have to waste your time talking about classes and stuff. Okay, so that's Trongate CSS. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.